Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a folded tarot card pouch. It doesn't have to be just for tarot cards, it can be for whatever you want. It's like a little purse also. Um, but it's really simple. It just consists of single crochets and double crochets. Um, but yeah, let's get started. You will need a weight for yarn. I like to use the I Love This Cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby. I like to work with cotton when it comes to little projects like this. You will also need a size 4.5 millimeter hook. Um, a darning needle or a yarn needle, so like a large eye needle for your yarn. And you will also need a pair of scissors, and I like to have a measuring tape on hand, um, like a, a soft one, but it doesn't have to be a soft one. So we're first going to work on the body of the pouch, so the part where your actual items will be going into, and you will start off by making a slip knot. Also make sure that you leave a long tail for when you need to uh, sew up the sides of your pouch later on. It just makes it easier that way. Attach it to your hook and then you're going to make a chain of 21 chains plus 2. So all in all it'll be 23 chains, but your plus 2 is going to be a turning chain. Twenty-one chains is the base that I tend to do for my tarot card pouch. What you can do is take your cards and you can line up your chains next to it to see if it's going to fit. Um, I like to do a little couple on the extra just in case, um, but you can make it however big or however small you want. But if you're doing it for a tarot card pouch, I would do twenty-one chains. So then you will do your two chains for your turn. And you're going to double crochet into the third chain from the hook. And I like to turn my chain over and you'll see these little bumps on the other side. I just like the way that it looks um, when, you, when you crochet into that, but you don't have to. But make sure that you're still just, you're going to double crochet into the third chain from the hook. A double crochet is yarning over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, and you will have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And I'll show you again, yarn over. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, you'll have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And then you will continue doing one double crochet in each stitch until the end, and you will have 21 stitches at the end. Once you get to the end, you'll do your last double crochet, and you should have something that looks like this. And then you will chain one, and this does not count as your first stitch. 
you'll be putting a single crochet into that same stitch so that very first opening And a single crochet is just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. And you will do that until the end. Once you get to the end, you should have 21 stitches, and it'll look something like this. And then you will chain two, and turn your work. And you will do one double crochet in each stitch until the end. You will repeat double crochet and single crochet rows until you get something that's about 8 inches long or something that covers your tarot deck when it's folded. So it should look a little bit like this as you're going along, but you will continue doing this until it's about 8 inches long and you will want to make sure to end on a single crochet row. Also make sure that you're always counting, making sure that you have 21 stitches for every single row. Here I'm finishing up my last double crochet row. I like to stop at a double crochet row just so I can measure it and make sure that I haven't gone too far so that my last row will be a full 8 inches. So you can see that I'm just about 8 inches so my very last row which should be a single crochet uh, row will make it to 8 inches. If you don't have a soft measuring tape or anything to measure with, you can just take your tarot deck and put it onto your work and then fold it over to make sure that it covers both sides. To finish off, I just like to chain one just to secure it, and then you're going to want to leave a long tail, and then cut your work. Now we're going to take our darning needle and we're going to fold over our work and we're going to be whip stitching the sides together. So 
So attach your yarn to your needle. And to do a whip stitch, which is kind of hard to see how to do it on here, but you're just going to want to insert your hook into that very first stitch of one side and then insert it to the other just to secure it on this first stitch. And then you're going to go under a stitch and you're going to go into the outer stitch on the other side and then pull through. Not every stitch is going to be as uh, easily seen as that. You're not going to be able to see the outer edge of each side for every single part, but you're just going to want to try and get it you know, the best that you can, but you're going to keep doing that until you get to the very end. If you don't like the way that this will look, um, you can just take your, your hook and do single crochets or slip stitches along the edge. I just like the way that a whip stitch looks, so it's up to you, but this was the way that I did it. Continue until you get to the very end and I like to just pull through on that very last one and then double check that I didn't miss anything. I don't like to have like a, a lot of holes around but then you're just going to weave your, your extra yarn in just a little bit and then I like to knot it just to secure. And then once you've done your knot, you can just weave in a little bit of your extra yarn and then you'll want to cut it. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. It's the same process. You want to make sure you go through that very first stitch. Make sure that you're connecting both sides. And then just do a whip stitch all the way to the end. Once you've cut and tied your yarn, what I like to do is I like to flip it inside out just to see how it's going to look. But you'll see that both sides are nice and connected and it looks nice and clean. And then just to double check, I like to just put my deck inside to make sure that it will fit comfortably. And now we're going to work on the flap. First you'll make a slip knot and attach it to your hook. 
and then you're going to chain six. And then you're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Again, I'm going into the little humps on the back, you don't have to, but single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you will do one single crochet in each stitch until the end, and you should have five stitches. And then you're going to chain two and turn your work. This chain two does not count, by the way. And then you're going to double crochet three times into the same stitch. And then you will do one double crochet into the next stitch. Two double crochet into the next stitch. One double crochet into the next stitch. And then three double crochet into the last stitch. This should give you 10 stitches. And then you're going to chain one and turn your work. And you're going to single crochet two times into that first stitch. And then you will do one single crochet in each stitch for the next eight stitches. And in your last stitch, place two single crochet. And you should have 12 stitches at the end. Next, you're going to chain two and turn your work. Place three double crochet into the first stitch. And then chain one. Then you'll skip one 
and double crochet into the next stitch. And then you will chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next stitch. And you will repeat this until you have one stitch left. Once you have one stitch left, you will place three double crochets into that last stitch. And you should have 16 stitches at the end. Now chain one and turn. Place one single crochet into the next four stitches. And now place two single crochets into that chain one space. Now place one single crochet into the next three stitches. Two single crochet into the next chain one space. And then one single crochet into the next three stitches. Place two single crochets into the chain one space. and then put one single crochet into the next three stitches. You should have 19 stitches now. And now chain two and turn your work. Your chain two does not count, by the way. Now place one double crochet in the same stitch. Now chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next stitch. chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat this until you have two stitches left.
when you get to the last two stitches you're going to chain one skip one and place two double crochet into that last stitch and you should have 21 stitches Now chain one and turn and place one single crochet into the same stitch and place another single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet two into the chain one space and then single crochet into the next stitch. Continue this until you have one stitch left. Place one single crochet in the last stitch. You should now have 30 stitches. Chain two and turn. Place two double crochets into the same stitch. Now place one double crochet into each stitch for the next 28 stitches. Once you reach the last stitch, place two double crochets into that last stitch. And now you should have 32 stitches. Now you will be chaining one and working along the side edge. You'll single crochet the amount you chained in the beginning, in my case that'll be 23 stitches. There won't be any actual stitches along the edge, so place your stitches however you need to to get to that amount that you need. Chain one.
Now you're going to align the flap with one side of your pouch. It doesn't matter which side, they should both have the same amount of stitches. Just make sure that you pick the side that you want to face outward. When choosing the exact spot to start on the side, what I do is I find that seam and that's where I'm going to attach my first single crochet. And to attach, you're just going to insert your hook into the side of your flap and insert it into the corresponding stitch on your pouch. And then single crochet the two together. Now continue doing single crochets to attach the two pieces together until you get to the end. When you get near to the other side, uh, you might have like a couple of stitches that you weren't able to get into like I did. So what I did is I just skipped like one stitch and I made sure that my very, very last stitch, my 23rd stitch was going to go into the other whip stitch side. And now your two pieces should be attached, so now you can just chain one and cut your work. Pull it through and then make it tight. And so now you can see that you have a nice seam that when you flip the flap over, you won't be able to see it. And now you'll want to take your darning needle and you're going to weave in your ends. So what I like to do to weave in my ends is I like to kind of weave it through that seam just so it stays pretty secure. But I just go up and around and however I can to make it so that it will stay secure.
And for any other tails that you have, just do the same thing. For this one, I like to go into uh, the stitch that's like right next to it. And I like to just pull that through just to make it look a little more seamless. And what I like to do once I finish something, I like to just test it out to make sure that it's the right size, it's everything that I want for um, what I want to put inside of it. So I'm just putting my tarot cards in, seeing if I like the way it looks, and it turned out really good. And the last thing that we're going to make is the tie around. You could add a button if you would like, but I didn't have any, so this is the other way that you can do this. So you're going to make a slip knot and attach it to your hook. And then what I like to do is make a chain that is about 30 to 40 inches long. So that way I can tie it around and then I can make a little knot at the end. So this is just me measuring to make sure, but I also wanted to show you that I don't know how many exact uh, stitches I did. I just made sure that it was between 30 and 40 inches long, and it turned out to be about 32 inches long. And once it's at the length that you want it to be at, I just like to single crochet an extra one and then cut the yarn and then you could just pull it through make it tight and then just cut the yarn again to make it so you don't see it um, but what I like to do is I like to make a couple of knots at the very end to make a chunkier knot so it just finishes off the work a little more uh, cleanly And don't forget to do both ends of your tie. I've definitely had pieces where I forgot to do one side, so just make sure you do both ends. And then to attach your tie to your piece, I like to find about the middle stitch of my flap and I just take my hook and I, I pull the tie through. And then once you've pulled it through, you can just wrap it around however you like. And then this is what your finished pouch should look like. When it comes to any of the tarot pouches that I make, I like to do this little like looped knot just to finish it off. I like the way that it looks. It just makes it look a little more, 
I don't know, like whimsical, I guess. And there you go, there's your very own tarot pouch or crystal pouch or whatever you want to use it for pouch. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed and make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and my Etsy and I'll see you next time.